going everyone, AFC Finners. We're back in London, but this time it's East London, Leighton Orient. The, uh, doing a Cheltenham Town away day. I went to Gloucester Rugby last night, still got my Gloucester shirt on, but I think they'll forgive me. <laughs> this is exciting, one of the most traditional football league clubs who obviously returned to the Football League a couple of years ago. They've got a really fascinating history, as you'll find. And Tomaldo and Luciano joins us. How's Hello. it going, lads? Enjoy the dri enjoy your drive up here. It's all right. Yeah, we're going to Heaven on Earth, Beacon of Light afterwards. But yeah, East London, Cheltenham Away Day. Very excited. London. Um, oh, yes, yeah, please. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know how you say it. Is that Gorhan Gorgon? I'm calling it Brisbane Road. There he is, after the man, the legend, no knowing to save you, Justin Edward. Let's have a look inside the club shop. We've got that no knowing dressing gown. Pin badges? Oh, my suspicions were right, I think. No pin badges? Oh dear. It's a nice spot we've just seen in the park next to the ground. Statue to legendary Laurie Cunningham. Pioneer in English football. True legend. Good of them to honour him. Yeah. We're going to a nice, well, onto a nice local Greasy Spoons. Nice late Norwegian theme. It's very cool. And Tom's just poured the entire sugar export from there. Cuba into his tea. Very fun. And we've got a um, nice Miranda in honour of the former Atletico Madrid centre-back. It's going to be a good day. There go. Bomb at chips and beans, can't complain. They got their full English. I highly doubt, I highly doubt Luke's going to finish that, you know what he's like. Yeah, little war memorial. It's nice and annoying. People associated with me lost their lives in two great conflicts. So, we're about to go inside, but before we do, let's find out a bit about today's hosts, Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient were formed in 1881 by the Glynn Cricket Club, later changing their name to Orient, supposedly because one of their players, Jack R. Deering, was an employee of the Orient Steam Navigation Company. They started out near Hackney, but moved to Clapton later on, being known for a while as Clapton Orient. They moved to their current home of Brisbane Road in Leighton in 1937 changing their name to Leighton Orient after the Second World War. After a lengthy period in Division 3 South, they won the league in 1956 to ascend to second tier, where they would spend 20 of the next 25 years. They reached the top flight for the first time under a merchant of former Manchester United captain Johnny Kerry, but they would be relegated after one season. They won Division 3 in 1970 and also achieved a cup upset by knocking Chelsea out of the FA Cup in 1972. Two years after Blues had won the cup. Six years later, they reached the FA Cup semi-finals. The 1980s saw them sink to the fourth tier, but they were promoted under Frank Clark in 1989. The 90s saw promise at first, but they also had financial difficulties before they were saved when Barry Hearn took over in 1995. Around this time, the club was subject to a fly on the wall documentary, Orient for a Fiver, which included co-manager John Sitton sacking defender Terry Howard during a half-time team talk. They would lose in the playoff final in both 1999 and 2001, with Chris Tate scoring after just 27 seconds for the O's in the latter. After struggling following these defeats, Martin Ling guides them to promotion in 2006, their first automatic promotion in 36 years. Russell Slade took over in 2010 and guided them on an incredible FA Cup run. After trailing Droylston by two goals to nil in the second round, they scored six times in extra time to win 8-2. A victory over Premier League Swansea took them to a fifth round against Arsenal, who they held to a draw before losing 5-0 at the Emirates. They reached the playoff final in 2014, but lost to Peter Brown penalties 
In 2015, they were taken over by Italian businessman Francesco Baschetti, whose tenure was a disaster. His first season saw four different managers take charge as they're relegated, and two years later went through five different managers as they're relegated to the National League, putting an end to 112 years in the Football League. Bischetti would sell the club that summer, with Nigel Travis, chairman of Duncan Brands, taking over. Justin Edwin would take charge in 2017, and two years later took the club back to where they belonged, winning them the National League to return to the EFL. However, their joy was short-lived, as that summer, Justin Edwin passed away after suffering a cardiac arrest. The next year, they named the West Stand of Brisbane Road after him in his honour. Richie Wellens guided the club to a League 2 title in 2023, and the solid season has proved that the future is bright for the O's, as they look to undertake a new lengthy stay in the Football League. Overall, they have won two third division titles, one fourth division title, one National League title, one Anglo-Scottish Cup, and four London Challenge Cups. And a bit of trivia, Leighton Orient were the first EFL club to host a member of the Royal Family, when the Prince of Wales, who would later go on to be Edward VIII, watched the game at the Clapton Stadium between Orient and Notts County to pay thanks to the club after three of their players had lost their lives in the Battle of the Somme. So those are the hosts, Leighton Orient. Let's have a look inside their home, Brisbane Road. Yes. Well, here we are then. Nice view. Hour and a half before kickoff. How are you feeling, boys? All right. Welcome to East London. Also, look at these houses. Your balcony, you can watch a game whenever you want. What a life. Cheers. Right, got a nice cheese, um, potato and onion pie here. So East London, they know their pies, don't they? Let's give it a go. Locally sourced, I said. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's absolutely unbelievable. That. Yeah, it's nice. It's not, not quite as good as the Watford one, but very nice. Nice and crispy, good texture, good taste, and I just blend everything together. Got some nice soft potato and lingers on the tongue. East London pie match. You know it would make it taste better if you sat on the floor while eating it. Bit of merchandising. I missed a circle. That's why I stopped playing football. Hello. <laughs> In their tongue, he is Dolphaclean. Dragonborn. Oh, man, uh, evolved into Leighton. <laughs> uh, right, Luke, what the hell are you doing? They're not very good. <laughs> He's got a point. Moments later, he was right. That just blocked it. The umbrella sacrifice was not in vain. It saved my life. Fair play. I owe you an apology. I was unfamiliar with your game. You all laughed at me. <laughs> oh. Way through the first half, Cheltenham have been a better side, but not really been anything concrete yet. But I think if anybody's going to get the goal, it's going to be Cheltenham. Leighton Orient been very poor, can't really string too much together apart from a few ventures in the half. But it's been quite tight, not quite sure where the break will come. We'll see, still 0 0. That was unexpected and the commentator's curse strikes again. Ethan Galbraith, former Manchester United player, got the ball from the edge of the box. He sits it from range, it slipped through the hands of Luke Southwood and gone in. First real concrete chances, the home side who take an unexpected lead against the run of play. 1-0 to Leighton Orient.
Well, this is unexpected. Yeah, I was going to say that bit, you twat. Um, yeah. Oli O'Neill has curled in a brilliant shot from the edge of the box, and it's not a fair score either. Goodness knows how this has happened, but I guess Cheltenham have been punished for taking advantage of their momentum. To Nalorian, that might be the three points sealed. You guys okay? Tom, it's okay. We're going to Beaconsfield. 2 0. You have got to be kidding me. Someone, please don't tell me someone's got a Papa John's delivered at a football match. The game's gone. Well, if you told me that would be the score midway through the first half, I'd have thought you were mad, but somehow Leighton Orient have done what they needed to do, been clinical, taking their chances, and that's how you win football matches. Cheltenham didn't take advantage of their momentum, and they've been punished for it. But yeah, not, not a fair infection. I'd say 1-0 would be understandable, but 2-0, it's weird. But hopefully Cheltenham could grow into it in the second half, but it might be that they've lost their chance and Orient will be able to see it out. We'll have to see. Half time, 2-0. So they have a burger shack that literally only does a burger. I can't respect that. Here we are. We've got a bit of merchandise. So, Dion, this is Dion. He's going to smash his passing. Oh, Midway through the second half, Leighton Orient have been better, but Cheltenham have just gained a bit of momentum. But to me, it seems like Leighton Orient will hold out the lead. It just seems like it's probably a little too little, too late. But Cheltenham, until the last five minutes, have been quite poor this half. And I can't see them getting out of it. Still too now. minutes to go it's goal number three that decides the three points I felt like it was coming Cheltenham's momentum didn't last too long and Leighton Orient uh, broke forward and an up 10 Cyprian forward Ruel Sotiriu has curled in an absolute beauty there have been three good goals this game basically all three from outside the box I believe but yeah three points are still to delivered and based on the second half it's deserved we got that good <laughs> He's right. But yeah, the home side see their way through to a comfortable win. 3-0, could there be more? <laughs> no, no, they've got a point. Full-time and Leighton Orient win 3-1. The gap between the goal and the full-time whistle was so quick I didn't have time to do the update. But yeah, Cheltenham crossed it and the keeper fumbled it. It's been slotted in. So they denied Leighton Orient the clean sheet. But it kind of sums up that they only scored when it didn't matter. But yeah, Leighton Orient deserved that in the end. Cheltenham were good in the first half but didn't actually produce anything. And they've been punished. Leighton Orient did what they needed to do. They were clinical. And that's why they're winners. And that's why Cheltenham are in the relegation zone. It's going to be a tough battle for Cheltenham. Leighton Orient will certainly be finishing comfortably. Full time, Leighton Orient 3, Cheltenham 1. Because I'm a top geezer, got us all 99. Can't be beat us. Finishing day in heaven on earth, Beacon Shield Services. Got some lovely noodles here from Chop Six Noodle Bar. That's Luke and that's Tom. There's the rugby behind us. 
but yeah, really fun day. Not the ideal at all, but I've really enjoyed it. And that was a ground to take off, certainly a staple of the EFL. So all the best to Leighton Orient for the rest of the season. And I've got a week off next week because I'm going to a festival in Croydon. Wish me luck. <laughs> um, after that, we'll be wrapping up the season with some very interesting trips. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave you now as I enjoy these succulent noodles. But let's us rate the experience. So we will start off with the welcome. A point it was a slightly mixed bag. Like it didn't start off great because we tried to go into the supporters bar and they do his work at the door kind of got a bit abrupt of us. I'm sort of like, oh, you can't come in unless you're a member. If you're not a member, it's one pound. By all means, if like there's certain conditions mean you can't come into the bar like you're an away fan or whatever and just say, oh, sorry, you have to pay a quid if you're not a member or let's just say away fans couldn't come in or sorry, there's no away fans in the bar. So you could have easily dealt with it that way. But the way she sort of came up to us and said like, it's a pound. Like, it made us kind of feel a bit like, mm, all right, we'll just go somewhere else then. It's only a quid, but because she was a little bit rude, we were a bit like, oh, we'll just go elsewhere. We weren't willing to go and pay the quid. Whereas if <laughs> she'd been a bit polite, we probably would have all got a pint and we'd have spent like three or four quid on that. So they lost a bit of money doing that. And there was one steward who was a little bit rude as well. But apart from that, honestly, all the members of staff were really, really nice. There was a steward who was chatting to us before the gates opened, asking us about Cheltenham and how far we'd come. There was a Leighton Orient fan who came up to us and was just chatting to us about the team and how they'd been getting on, asking how Cheltenham had been getting on. So definitely a really nice club. And like the, the people working at the food bits were incredibly nice. Apart from two people who were very much a minority, I thought they're a very friendly club and it's really nice when they go out of their way to like ask about you and I think the way it's set up all the like flags decorations they really make sure to bring forth the identity of the club and not just make it just be a stadium there's a lot going on there and I think it's they make it a really good match day experience they definitely redeem themselves like against like the two crew members of staff apart from that people were fine so I think it's a really good welcome I'll probably give it an eight out of ten Food and drink, this was a good one because I really like it when clubs sort of venture into their local delicacies and obviously in East London Club, they serve pie and mash. They definitely hit the nail on the head there. And there's a really good range of options. You know, for me, there was a cheese and onion pie, but there was also a vegan pie if you didn't like cheese. And I don't really like onions, but if I'm going to have to have onions in something, I want them to be subtle and they definitely managed to do that. So yeah, really good variety of options. And the fact they had that burger van all to itself was really good thinking because it means that the people who are working where they're serving the pies and all that weren't overwhelmed, didn't have too much going on, just balances it out a bit. I think that's really good thinking. I don't think they and I don't like own the greasy spoons we went to, but I really like it when there's a place like that that fans have been going to for years before a game. Like we went to one at Millwall, one that just really embraces the identity of the club and is somewhere for people to sit down, drink coffee and chat to each other about the game before, I thought was excellent. So I think Leighton Orient have really thought out the food and drink really well. There's a good variety of options that caters for everyone. And as well as the variety of options, the food I think is really good quality. So I'll probably give the food and drink a 9 out of 10. Atmosphere, I was a bit disappointed by this one, to be honest, because I think they've also got a really strong fan base, very historical EFL club. I'd say the stadium was probably about 80, 90% full. It didn't really make much noise considering like the result. They only really started singing after they went ahead and there were one or two points worth singing, but it wasn't even like that loud. And by means it was like a positive atmosphere like they got behind the team and all that there was very minimal singing and when they did it wasn't too loud so i was a bit disappointed by that i thought it was going to be a stadium where there would be a lot of singing london fans can be very passionate so i think sometimes when i've been to clubs i've kind of caught them on the wrong day it's a season that's a write-off so the atmosphere is not as good as it might normally be but here it's like you know they win the conference a couple of years ago last year they won the league this year they're doing quite well in league one I don't really see why the atmosphere should have been as flat as it was. I was quite disappointed by the atmosphere, to be honest. I'll give it a 4 out of 10. Stadium, it's definitely one of the most unique ones I've been to in the EFL. I think it's really well thought out. Like the Justin Edinburgh stand opposite me, I thought worked quite well in the fact it was one tier but had like the corporate seats on top. It was kind of weird. I think some people will have mixed feelings on what it looks like, but... I think it's well thought out. I liked the stand we were in and the two either side of us were kind of traditional. I do think it's an issue when there are pillars in the middle of a stand. It's tricky because I liked the roof of the stand we were in. But I understand if they tore that down to get rid of the pillars, it might sort of become a bit more modern and soulless. But I suppose you do have to regenerate things 
they've definitely not lost their soul. They found a good way to balance out the old with the new. <laughs> I did, it was quite funny seeing people just watching the game from their balcony. I might be wrong. I think it's the first ground I've been to where they've had that. But at least there's something blocking out the corners because I don't like it when there's just an empty corner and you can just see the outside world. So I definitely think it's a really nice place to watch football and they put a lot of pride into decorating things out of modern art and the outside of the stadium I think is really well kept. But you know, on one side is really modern, one side is really traditional and I like that, that they've been able to balance it out. I think it's a really decent stadium and obviously if you're a fan of the EFL, Leighton Orient are one of the staple clubs and I definitely recommend going there. Tiny bits of work to be done in some places but hopefully if they keep doing well they'll be able to make the changes needed. So I'll probably give the stadium a 7 out of 10. And finally, value for money. Not too much wrong with this. The ticket was 24 quid, which a tiny bit more than I think it should be for this level, but it's only four quid. It's fine. The program's 350. I think they should all be three quid personally, whatever ground you go to, unless it's way more content than normal. Again, that's fine. It's only 50p. The food and drink, it wasn't too bad. It cost me less than a tenner to get a pie and a pint. I think there are places I've been to where it's cheaper. It was sort of a conversation me and Tom were having. If I spend money on something, I like it to go far. And I think, you know, the pie did the job it needed to. It filled me up and it was a really nice pie. Green King IPA. Been ages since I've had that beer, but that's a really nice one. So I think I definitely didn't feel like I'd wasted my money. They're not ripping you off. It's obviously a decent stadium, but I think the price is quite reasonable. There's not really any reason for me to kick off about the prices they were giving. So I'll probably give the value for money an 8 out of 10. So that was Brisbane Road, home of Leighton Orient. It was a really fun day and the only negative was the atmosphere, but it's still really good to see such a historic EFL ground like that. And it is so good to see Leighton Orient doing well, considering everything that happened when they got relegated to a conference and the tragedy that happened with Justin Edinburgh. They're a club I really like and I really wish them all the best. But it's definitely worth the journey to London for that. So yeah, really good to take that off. That is ground 99. I forgot to mention in the video as well. 99 grounds, soon to be 100. What an amazing achievement that is. Thank you, Tomado, for all your help in getting me to that number. But I wish you all the best, Leighton Orient. Thank you for a fun day and absolutely no hostility from your fans. You're clearly a really nice group of supporters. And I hope that you can continue your rise back. You know, you're in a promising position. Hopefully soon you'll be able to find a way back to the second tier. What an achievement that would be. All the best for the rest of the season, Leighton Orient. And thank you all for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can check out the Ground to Ground playlist. And also, you can support me on Patreon for as little as £1 a month. Check out the link in the description. By doing that, you'll be able to make more days like this possible. And I'll be eternally grateful. Let me know what you thought of Brisbane Road and where you'd like me to go next. Thank you all for watching. I've been AFC Finners. See you next time and stick with us as we go Ground to Ground. AFC Finners out.